Hey friends, today on Due to the Travel Bug, we are cruising and giving you our reasons of why bigger isn't always better. This travel family are no strangers to cruising. We've been on many different cruise lines and sizes, and yes, we have been seduced and booked some of the monstrously humongous ships sailing today. This is the best one yet. <laughs> yeah? Oh, don't listen to that guy. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't get an opinion. So more times than not, we are snagging a deal and going on a smaller and older ship. Now there are a lot of advantages of cruising smaller ships. There's much lower cost and easier to navigate, but here's our top three reasons. Number three. Number three, are the extras important to you? Like, really? Now, it's cool to say my ship has an ice skating rink on it, but my chubby butt doesn't ice skate on land, so I'm sure not gonna do it in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. What's important to us? The destinations. Let's go somewhere awesome. Hey, and entertain me, feed me, and put a cocktail in my hand between awesome places. I'll visit a theme park when I get home. Plus, we often find the entertainment on board works for the cruise line, and many times they swap ships at the ports. So the entertainer that just played one of the jumbo ships is now performing for a small, intimate group the very next day. Number two, it is a more intimate setting. Everything may be smaller, like pool decks and dining rooms, but there's so much less passengers that nothing ever feels too crowded. Big ships, you end up feeling like cattle, always standing in long lines. And don't get me started on tendering. Ugh, you can only move people so fast. And when we dock, I want off. I got an excursion to get to. Plus, the larger ships just have to tender more often than smaller ships because the cruise companies keep building bigger and bigger ships and the piers can't accommodate them. Smaller ships also give you the opportunity to connect with other guests because good luck finding someone you really hit it off with on Monstrosity of the Seas. Also, we love how it's just easier to get to know the staff. They don't have as many passengers to work with every day, so friendships happen. Sometimes it's not the ship that makes the cruise, but it's the people on them. Putting the butter inside of his head so he can have it to eat, pull it back out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Whoa! <laughs> <gasps> Whoa! It's done! What? Number one! And the number one reason to take a smaller ship? are the itineraries. Hey friends, cruise ships are just super great ways to get around. Pick a cruise with a fantastic itinerary. That super duper gigantic ship you're going on, you're gonna pay for it twice, once before you go and once while you're on it. Because humongous ships have more days at sea, period. This is how cruise companies squeeze every bit of cash out of their guests they can for these giant ships. When passengers have more days at sea, they're spending money on the ship's casino, bars, and shops. Smaller ships have more options for destinations. Some cruise ships are simply too large to squeeze into a port. Plus, cruise lines know that their clients, who have traveled with them often, want to go somewhere they haven't been yet, so the smaller ship is assigned those itineraries. Another thing to consider when taking a smaller ship is that it stops at ports that bigger ships don't stop at. The big ones go to the same islands, it seems like, and you'll see rows and rows and rows of ships. And here we are docked in St. Croix, and we are the only boat, and we have been the only boat here all day. So um, another, another check mark for small ships. Most importantly, let this video be your reminder to book your next adventure, because sometimes it's nice to lose sight of shore. For more unique travel shows, like and subscribe to see where Doodlebug goes next.